Wilson Hall, NBC News. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Uh, well, sir. Yes, yes, Jeeves. The car is out front, sir. The car is out front. We still have four hours to go. We're not quite ready to leave, but we better load it up. All right. Do you want to? Uh, I have. Check the list. Your fan mail is packed in the suitcase. Fan mail, very good. All your phonograph records, your sir, phonograph have been placed records, in the sir. trunk. The tapes. The lights tapes. just blew and ruined our opening. <laughs> We're doing this for television, sir. Do you notice the television, sir? Yes, yes. These fellows here standing around picking their ear. They're TV people. Did you, uh, you have the tapes packed? I have the tapes packed, sir. You do have the tapes packed? Yes, I'm filling so we can get the lights back on. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing all right till we brought a lighting man in. You, know, you notice that, sir? <laughs> well, we'll do it again. For, I have your old commercials here, sir. All the old commercials. All your old commercials. All right, we better pack them, too, uh, Jeeves, if you don't mind. All right? All right, here they are, sir. <laughs> Gee, I guess that's uh, that's about everything up there that's got to go, right? No, sir, not quite. What 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 else do we have? You, sir. Me. you didn't recognize that song that is the theme we used to use when we started here on july the 11th 1955 a ah, momentous day in the annals of radio that is called the sicilian tarantella and that's done by uh, i don't know somebody's orchestra but the fact is that henry that, renee is an that's orchestra. henry renee and that kind of music is in now anything sicilian is in that's right you should play it all the way through okay guido what do you think you say, i kid? think you should play it hey wait a minute the joy boys of radio we chase electrons to and fro we are the joy boys of radio we chase electrons to and fro Well, that's a lot of people have said that over the years, friends. But it is hello there one more time as we uh, we wrap it up after 17 years. Of radio, let's wrap it right up. And this afternoon, we're going to try to recap. What are we delivering, Mr. Walker? Huh? Oh, uh, don't worry about it. They'll. Uh, Where does it go? I think it's. Uh, I think it's spoiled. I think they'll take care of it up there. In the... Yes. All right. And it's time to. Uh, just a minute. Let me. Yellow. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Yeah, Walker. Yellow. I can't tell you how sorry we are that oh, you're leaving the air. Tr try. We try. really are sorry. You're really that. sorry that we're, we're leaving the air. We're just going to break our hearts. We're just scared to death. We're sick to death. Wait a minute. Yes. Who are you? I'm the program manager of WMAL. You may beat us now. This message is a public service of radio station WRC and the Metropolitan Police Department. Thank you, Officer Hankins. And uh, we've always enjoyed your stolen car reports because none of them were ours. Ha, <laughs> ha. Mm. 13 minutes after 2 o'clock at WRC. We're going to have the worm turns again. We're bringing it back one more time in just a few minutes. But right now, yes, would you come in? I'm just going to come in to say goodbye, Ed. I want Aww. you to know how much I've missed you. I hate Where's goodbye. the five you owe me? You miss me that much? That's right. I heard the word got out today. You're really, you're really, Twelve uh, people in the lobby waiting for you. You don't wait for the body to get cold, do you? Tell dear? Officer Hankins if it wasn't for crooks, he'd be out of work. Yes, See you later. So thank long, you so long, Maud. A slice of life. The continuing true to life story as the worm turns. The story of life today in a big city hospital and all brought to you by Scuff No More, the miracle plastic product of the space age to spray your little children to protect them from other little children. 
It's early afternoon as our story opens in Big City Hospital today. We find ourselves outside of the office of the highly respected throat surgeon, Dr. Clayton Jackson Durante. Dr. Durante was awakened in the middle of the night by a telephone call from a top 40 radio station where the all-night disc jockey had some pleading moments with the doctor. The doctor, being true to the medical profession, told him to call back in the morning, which he did. Outside the door now, pacing nervously, fiddling with his cigarette pack, he nervously lights his cigarette. There's a moment as he puffs, thinking to himself, what could this possibly be? Finally, the doctor knocks on the door. Oh, the doctor knocks sorry, on the door. I'm sorry. It's all right. Let me try it again, all right? We haven't been here for months. No, I... Go ahead. All habits are hard to break. Doctor <laughs> knocks on the door. Uh, Forget it. Come on in. And the young DJ, Pearly White, speaks. <coughs> Doc? Yeah, what is it, Junior? Dr. Durante? Yeah, that's me, Clayton Jackson Durante. Doc? Ja, 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 ja. Come on in and sit down, I Junior. Think I, say, I am sitting oh, down. Oh, you're I'm just a, short, huh, kid? <laughs> I've got a million of them, a million of Doc, them. Doc, I, 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 Stop oh, that. Try to get over Doc, that, will you, kid? I needed that. I, 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 I got something that's rather personal that happened to me at the studio last week, and I first noticed it after I'd had a date with a switchboard operator. Let me ask you something, kid. Does she have a sister? Well, what have we here? What happened to the young top 40 disc jockey after he had his date with the switchboard operator? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You won't want to miss the next gripping episode as the worm turns one hour from now when you'll hear the young DJ Pearly White speak to Dr. Girardi and say... Apparently, the young man is speechless. Be listening one hour from now when Scuff the More once more brings you The Worm Turns, written for radio by Denise on Damon De Valero, produced by Tarnal A.O.T. Thomas, a Damon Del Tandel production, and comes to you from Washington. Till 3.15. Ta-ta! wiki wiki woo Hey, that's the fantastic Arthur Godfrey. How are you? How are you? I wish the old Arthur were here today, but apparently... He couldn't uh, make it. It would be great if Arthur could have made it because it uh, actually... seems like oh, Arthur, he made it! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Arthur Codfish, and here he is, hey. Arthur, the old son of a gun himself, Codfish. Hey. Oh. Arthur, I think it's wonderful that you were able to come up from the farm today. Did you uh, come in by helicopter, Arthur? Listen, I came in today. I was here to see General Cratch at the Pentagon. Yes, I'm right. going to go and see Senator Gumpfen, and yes, then we're right. going to go over and see the President, and then finally go. we're going to see the Pope this weekend. I, I travel with a good crowd. Is it you true, Arthur, that last week, uh, <laughs> is it true that last week you had, you had an audience with His Holiness and you were up on the balcony, yes, and uh, one of the people in the crowd down yeah. there yelled up, Who's that man on the balcony with Arthur? Ah, 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 ah. Arthur, smart Ellie. Good thing Mutual News is moving to town. You. Well, Mr. Codfish, how are you? Carmel Quinn. I'm going to miss you, that I am. Say hello to the Joy Boys and speak to Eddie Walker. Hello to the Joy Boys. Dummy, say hello. Speak to Eddie Walker. Oh, hello, Eddie. Just want to say goodbye to all you nice fellows and remember that this is the same station that fired me about 33 years ago. In the same fine tradition, they said my voice was too raspy. Whatever gave They told idea. Kate Smith she was overweight and would never make it. Brinkley slipped through as a mutation. They must have missed him. <laughs> oh. But good luck to you guys. You dynamites, you got to make it. Thank you, Arthur. You managed to stay here 20 years. It took him a long time to catch on, oh, didn't oh, it? <laughs> oh, oh. So long, Arthur. Bye-bye, Arthur. There you go. More sausages, Mom. More pork sausages, Mom. Please. Oh. And now, the National Broadcasting Company is proud to present the adventures of Robin Hood of Rock Creek Park. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the band, lost by the 
Logan Shepherds, the greatest name in rye and wine, brings you the adventures of Robin Hood of Rock Creek Park. Today's exciting episode entitled, It's Old Horse Trade-In Time. As our story opens, we find Robin and his band of merry men riding up near the zoo outside of Rock Creek Park, near the Ford, as Robin says. Hey, watch the Ford, oh, men. Oh, 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 oh. Watch the Chevrolet, oh, men. Oh, oh. And the Ramblers and all oh. the love place cars. <coughs> I think we must be near the zoo, men. Hi, Robin, it's me. Uh, yes. Oh, little John. Kiss me once and kiss me twice. It's been a long, long winter. I was hibernating with a bear. You ought to change your brand of shaving lotion there, little John. Oh. Said the captain to the bosun, just look for the right. Forget the commercial, will you? This is Two more cornices and we go into grand rights, hey. little John. Men, I have hmm. called you here for a very special occasion. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Ben, I, I think I, it's... I, I, Will you I, shut I, up? Have you ever been to Bethesda? <laughs> Little John. Hmm? <laughs> You've been auditioning for another off-Broadway show or what? I've been doing guest shots with Milt Grunt on <laughs> Sunday. He's got a network, you know. Yes, I know all about that. Sponsored! Will you shut up? Shut up, Little John. Now then, men, I'd like... I'd like to discuss something with you. I think it's high time that we traded in our horses. What? Uh, oh, what? Oh? Yeah. Oh? Well, men, this is a mechanized age. Just think of how many more people we could rob if we had mechanized ways of doing it. You mean automobiles? Aye, Robin? that's the word, hey, automobiles. Hey. Uh, all right. <laughs> I thought we might go over and see Al Ronson, the man who builds cigarette lighters, and uh, he also sells cars. On the side, Robin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I, I have the name written down here. Now, uh, little John. Hi, Robin. Can you be trusted to do something intelligent for once? Through thick or fleet of night or hail Never or Never mind storm. the oath. Just take this piece of paper on which is written the man's name, his address, and what we want, and you come back here with our new car. Do you hear? Is he the nicest guy in town? Yes. The nicest car in town? Yes. The nicest buy in town? Yes. Never heard of him. Get out of here, little John. I never bought oh, a car with Mark you. Evans before, but I'll sure try it. And so Robin and his band of merry men wait patiently as little John speeds over to Al Ronson, the used car dealer, to find out what he's going to buy. Having sold their horses and collected $1,600, the men now feel confident that little... Well, here he comes now, men. Yes, little John has been to the dealer and he's got the car. Right over here, little John, in this thicket. Come here, boy. Get around on the turn in just a minute, Robin. I think he's coming in now. The world is that big man. Oh, yeah. Oh. like a madman. Little John. What? Is that? What is that car you've got there, little Robin, John? Robin, it's the new car I bought for you and Friar Tuck and uh, little John me and all the merry men. How in the world do you expect to get 20 men in that little... What is it? It's a 1953 MG, Robin. I got a good buy on it. You're going to get a good buy from me right now, little John. You're but look, through. we can put two in the glove compartment, one in the luggage. Right, fire, right, fire, little John. Hi, 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 hi. Go I, audition. Have you ever been to Bethesda? Shut up. Robin Okay, I think that just about does it for this particular half hour of the Walker Scott. Been a thrilling Friday half hour. And I've, I, Stand uh, by. We I have the news coming. Who's dumping, doing yeah. our news at two thirty? Donald Doak. Don Doak is ready. Him. Yeah, he's all. Well, NBC in Washington. There are rumblings of discontent among the announcers oh, tonight geez. on NBC radio. <laughs> That'll take your FM. <laughs> and now the news with Don Doak. <laughs> the Don Doak Show brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan Association, where your insured passbook savings earn 5% interest from the day of deposit to the day of withdrawal. Now, here's Don. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if we weren't fired, we will be now. The First Army is helping to evacuate merchants now from the low-lying areas of Richmond, with the James River expected to crest far above flood stage tomorrow. In rough seas off the North Carolina coast today, a U.S. nuclear submarine and a German freighter collided. No injuries were reported, and the vessels are not believed to be seriously damaged. Prince George's County Council President Winfield Kelly disputes reports that rezoning for a sports arena on parkland in Largo, Maryland threatens all parkland in the county. 
It's not the intention nor the desire of the county council to turn the rural residential zoning classification into a commercial zone, nor would be this be the effect of the amendment if adopted. Certain commercial operations are already permitted in the rural residential zone and in our park system. Indeed, some of our legal advisors contend that a sports complex at Largo can be built legally without changes in the existing law. But others have questioned this opinion. A majority of the county council, therefore, decided to introduce the zoning amendment to solidify the posture of the new arena project. Most of the council members share my view that it would be a tragedy for Prince George's County if the developer were forced to abandon Largo and search for a new arena site outside our county. Prince George's County Council President Winfield Kelly noting that some in the government believe construction of the sports arena at Largo would be legal under existing law. D.C. police are looking for five men who were involved in the holdup of the Riggs National Bank on 4th Street Southeast. Police say several men stayed in the gray sedan while others went inside. No further details were available. Democrats have asked a federal judge to specify that their candidates are not bound by the judge's curb on public discussion of the headquarters break-in case. Democratic presidential candidate George McGovern charges that President Nixon yesterday left such important items as the Vietnamese War and the economy off a list of campaign issues. WRC Time 233, Washington's weather after the Joy Boys for Equitable. Thank you and right on, Donald. When you hear someone refer to a certificate of deposit or a savings certificate, do you know what that person's talking about, really? Well, now, Equitable Savings and Loan Association of Washington and Wheaton thinks that you should be familiar with these terms if you're not already. You see, certificates of deposit are savings certificates. They're another way of saving money, a way that earns interest at a higher rate than the usual passbook account. So you simply put your money in a savings certificate in one lump sum, never adding to it or subtracting from it. And this money stays with Equitable for a certain period while it earns up to 6% annual interest, 6% now, compounded and paid quarterly. Why don't you find out from one of the friendly staff at Equitable? Your money could be earning more for you. 11501 Georgia Avenue in Wheaton, 915 F Street and 4505 Wisconsin Avenue in Northwest Washington, and all open daily 9 till 3. Extra hours at Wheaton of 5 until 8 on Friday evenings. Savings are insured up to $20,000 by the FSLIC at Progressive Equitable. It's the better place to save. Don? Cloudy and rather windy through this afternoon. Rain likely high in the low 70s. Rain tonight may be heavy at times, low in the mid-60s. Tomorrow, rain likely gradually ending during the day, high in the low 70s. Chance of rain, 70% this afternoon, 90% tonight, 70% tomorrow. Right now, winds are out of the east-northeast at 12 miles per hour, gusting to 22 miles per hour. The relative humidity, 81%, and the present temperature in Washington, 70 degrees. Don Doak, WRC, NBC News. Now back to Walker and Scott. How can you become a real Washingtonian? Make friends with Wilkins Coffee and give yourself a playbook. It's a local secret. Wilkins is the number one hometown coffee brand. Discover Wilkins' extra goodness in better hotels, restaurants, in your own home, too. Make friends with Wilkins Coffee and Dear friends, you're about to receive on John Barleycorn, Nicotine, and the Temptations of Eve. Okay, that's it. If it's so good. <coughs> oh, once I was happy and had a good wife. I had enough money to last me for life. I met with a gal and we went on a spree. She taught me to smoke and drink whiskey. Cigarette and whiskey and wild, wild Temptation, will you? Please. Sugar reach is a plot on the whole human race. A man is a monkey with one in his face. Here's my definition, believe me, dear brother. A fire on one and a fool on the other. Sugar eats and whiskey and wild, wild women. And love you freely, they'll drive you insane. Sanctification, 
will you? Dear friend, somebody get that bum out of here. Brother, repent or they'll write on your grave. Two women in whiskey, here lies a poor slave. Take warning, dear stranger, take warning, dear friend. How they'll write in big letters these words that stand. Liggerets and whiskey and wild, wild women. Uh, hold, hold it, bro hold it, brother. My friend, I'm afraid you're in the wrong place. We don't sing that kind of music here. Okay. Then show us your muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Out there, radio fans, it's time once more for Dear Lucille, the answer lady on radio. <laughs> and for those of you who have problems, remember Lucille helps to solve them. Lucille is a Potomac playgirl and part-time bon vivant. And Lucille is brought to you by Madame Mamiuch's calming tea, the tea that picks you up and never lets you down. Look for Madame Mamiuch in the big red box with the sleeping dragon on the portico. Yes, good afternoon. Hello, Lucille, and it's nice to see such a fat old bag today. I beg your pardon. And the mail over. pouch. Oh, the really, mail pouch yeah. is a fat one, isn't it? Yes, and ladies and gentlemen, as usual, you know, our program is entirely spontaneous and unrehearsed. I have never seen these letters before now. I don't even know you. Uh, Scott. Scott, yeah, Mr. Scott. Yeah, yes, I know okay. you. But I've, First of all, a lady from Silver mm. Spring writes, Dear Lucille, mm -hmm. we live in a lovely neighborhood, and we all get along so nicely on our block. Most all of us have been here for 20 years or longer. Yeah. There is an elderly lady two doors down from me who shall rename... Uh, name, whom shall remain nameless yes. for your broadcast sake, Lucille. Mm -hmm. She has this little Pekingese dog, Pekingese. and she dearly loves him. I see. He's a nice dog, and all the kids love him, and oh. he seems to like them. Yes. But, but he does have one very bad habit. I hate to ask this. What is it? Each his... night after supper, she lets him loose in the neighborhood for his one big romp before bedtime. <laughs> is that what they call it now? I'll never understand it, nor will I ever know the reason why, but he always heads for our backyard. Yard, yeah. And then it happens. And there it happens. Mm -hmm. This has been going on now for ten years. Why he insists on our yard with all the other yards. Why she allows him to, I'll never know. But right there in my yard each night at 8.30... Usually the same spot, Lucille. We can't even walk in the yard anymore. The kids are embarrassed. My husband says it's going to upset the ecology of the neighborhood. And it looks so awful. I ask Lucille, why my yard? Can't he do it somewhere else? <laughs> anywhere else. Lucille, if that dog buries one more bone in my yard, I think I'll scream. Sign, where, oh, where has my little yard... Had me worried for the moment. <laughs> I was always all set to hire Frank Sinatra to sing trees in front of your house just to get the dog into a different locale, as it were. <laughs> i tell you what you do. Why don't you go and bury a bone in his yard? That'll fix his wagon. <laughs> Thank you, Lucille. Lucille brought to you by Madame Mamiuge's Calming Tea. I tea. think that I shall never see... Oh, but get away from me, dog. Transcribe. <laughs> Jack Perkins, NBC News, emphasis, the campaign. The voter of this land has long experience to be skeptical of what politicians tell him, particularly during a campaign year. A campaign promise is something which cannot be relied upon. A statement of fact made in a campaign is not necessarily fact. And so it is again this year. Here are some examples taken from both sides. First, the vice president speaking in Nashville, Tennessee, saying that under the Nixon administration, food prices have risen substantially less than 10%. Mr. Agnew made that statement a couple of weeks ago before hundreds of people. When finally he corrected it, he did so in writing to just one person, the reporter who had questioned him on it. The fact is, food prices have gone up about twice as much as the vice president had said. 
Sergeant Shriver often makes the campaign promise that if McGovern Shriver are elected, there will be a job for everyone in this country who wants to work. No unemployment. Such an exaggerated promise sounds good, but also sounds unlikely. One line which has become the exemplar of misleading campaign statements is George McGovern's stout assurance a couple of months back that, quote, I am a thousand percent behind Tom Eagleton, made just days before he scrapped Tom Eagleton. Again, the vice president, Mr. Agnew, said in Fort Wayne last week that American planes are not bombing civilian targets in North Vietnam. It was a very flat statement. He may have meant to say they are not intentionally bombing civilian targets, but he said they are not bombing civilian targets, which is not the case. A misstatement may be a slip of the tongue or a slip of the mind, or it may be a candidate trying to say more today than he said yesterday to make news. But whatever the cause, the result is that the voter is given one more reason to disbelieve the politician. Jack Perkins, NBC News, Los Angeles. Okay, there we are, the Mississippi mud, and that's the sound of the ever-popular Johnny Man and Cy Zentner. Thank, uh, so long, guys. The, the, in all seriousness, the uh, TV crew from WTOP TV Channel 9 was here. Listen, Ed, I just, I sincerely want to thank you on behalf of all of us at Channel 9. It's just thank marvelous. You. Sorry, don't you talk. You are just I, the most wonderful I, show, I, and just, we're just delighted that you could just... Yeah, oh, thank you. That's, that's, that's their producer, uh, Gordon oh. Peterson and all of his crew. What a bunch of you. Glad they're Is gone. Is Gordon? Glad they're gone, I'll tell you. Well, watch for us tonight. Max. Watch for us tonight on... Uh, that was Warner Wolf. Watch for us tonight on Channel 9. <laughs> okay, man, throw the boom out. That's it. That's all right. Here we go. Here's Wolf's, Wolf's pick hits of the week. Oh, excuse me. In the Wolf's Den. Hey, listen, really, thanks to all of our friends who have called up. So many people have uh, stormed the lobby. Two. And <laughs> two called up and one guy... That's better the than lobby. usual. Yeah. Guy at the liquor store said it's in the, it's in the switchboard room, man, when you get off at six. All right. But... <laughs> Really, uh, Ned, uh, Ryan, and Lance, uh, and Candy King from upstairs, NBC, WRC Promotion. They brought us an old Paps, I shouldn't say this, an old beer can that's been made into a radio. And uh, I can I show you an old beer can it. that's going to be made into a radio station that is going to be made back into a beer can Monday. Uh, but <laughs> we do thank you for Channel 4's marvelous can. They finally got uh, off there uh, uh, and brought the thing in. And all yeah, yeah, yeah. people that called up, that's marvelous. I'm sorry we're not able to have visitors in the studio because uh, so many people have. <laughs> the way the guard says. Yeah. Yeah, right, hey, the National They'll Safety Council's the National Safety Council's Defensive Driving Course, co-sponsored during June and July last year by WRC and the Traffic <laughs> Safety, in uh, cooperation with the station, has formed another class this month of October. And if you'd like to uh, learn better driving techniques, why don't you join the class? It'll meet for eight hours, two hours each Saturday during the month of October. And uh, if you'd like to know more about it, why don't you call them? And their telephone number is 629-3368. Thank you. All right. Enter. Come in. It's been a busy day. I'm yes, it has you, been. I'm from the accounting department. I didn't realize all of these people here love sailing so much. Wait a minute. You're from the accounting department. What does that have? Well, how do you know the people Well, they're love all sailing? apparently going down to Annapolis on the Severance and do some sailing. The Severance. And cut that out. <laughs> From the Hotel Sheen. Nothing new has made me bananas. Hey, hey, that's the lovely guy, Mark's entertaining you. Walking Scott, the Joy Boys, six minutes uh, before uh, three o'clock. Yeah. And in case we lose our old pal, Johnny Wilcox, so we say goodbye oh. to you now because you were nice oh. enough to allow us to come in and wreck your studio at 1.30 while the Channel 9 crew set up their lights. And we thank you. Nobody uh, knew the difference. Have uh, <laughs> you'll, Tomorrow you'll do your song, I guess. Uh, your, your number, as we Jazz. say in the business. My well, thing, as I, we used to say. We wish you the best of everything. Thank you, my boy. And I just hope one thing. And that is, you don't get the first job in town because we're looking for I, it. I thought you were <laughs> going to wish that I'd find work. <laughs> well, that's true. The more guys here get work, the uh, figure the See better. See the uh, unemployment office, John. Monday morning, 9 o'clock. Yeah, right. Okay, if you get there first, same spot for me. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll drive up in your rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Bad, Bad for the image. image, that's right. I understand you married money, John. Is that right? Did? Huh? <laughs> I wish he'd bring some of it out now. <laughs> You're the greatest. You are. What a nice, really and truly, even with him, with him here in the studio, I'll say it. He's one of the nicest guys. I'm only sorry we haven't known each other longer. It's just about a year. And it's true with Larry. I talked to Larry this morning at, uh, at six, uh, 8 o'clock, Larry called. 
our Larry Walton. And Larry is going to Baltimore. He was, he's the only one worth his soul. That's good, boy. We can sure use him over there. We got some lousy jocks over in Baltimore. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Go to Sears. Oh, and get Larry used one. to be on over there a few years ago before he came over here, you know. That's right. He's well. a booster to birds and the Orioles and the Colts and them bullets and everything. And uh, so we're, we're glad to have Larry back yeah. because we know that the beer consumption is going to go way up for us. Yeah, the, all the licensed renewal people over there going crazy. Yeah, that's right, boy. He gets dirty on the air, you know. <laughs> that's the secret of his success. Only show on radio with an hour delay. Kid came in here one day for a tour and smelled Larry's and smells just like daddy. <laughs> so hang around the same places, I guess. Walker and Scott here, and we are the Joy Boys of Radio for one more time. We're going to take time out now for a little bit of news, and then we'll get back. NBC in Washington. Wow. That's what they all say. WRC, it's 3 o'clock. Stand by for news. NBC Radio, news on the hour. Richard Rosenthal reporting. United Press International quotes informed sources from both South Vietnam and the United States as saying the Allies will offer a new Vietnam peace plan before the November elections. UPI says the new plan includes provision for the resignation of South Vietnam's President Nguyen Van Thieu, one of the Communists' chief demands. UPI quotes its sources as saying Thieu discussed the problem with White House military advisor Major General Alexander Haig when Haig was in Saigon earlier this week. The new Allied peace plan would reportedly call for an end to the U.S. blockade of North Vietnam, an end to U.S. bombing over the North, and a total U.S. withdrawal from South Vietnam. In exchange, UPI says Hanoi would have to stop infiltrating troops into South Vietnam, would have to free all American prisoners, and would have to agree to serious negotiations to resolve other still unsettled questions. There has been no comment yet from any government source on the United Press International story. Republicans and Democrats disagree about what the new unemployment figures mean. Details in a moment. Honey Car World Champion Gene Snow's got it. NASCAR Late Model Sportsman Champion Red Farmer's got it. Unlimited Hydroplane World Champion Miss Budweiser's got it. Grand Tour. 
Mad Dog champion Ken McClellan's got it. And Andy Granatelli's got it. STP oil treatment. STP helped 78 world champion drivers get there last year. It'll help your car get there. STP helps your car run smoother, cooler, quieter, longer. Have your service station at STP to your oil and run racer sharp. STP. The national unemployment rate edged downward last month to 5.5% of the workforce. White House economic advisor Herbert Stein said he was pleased with the new jobs figures. A top Democratic economist, Arthur Oakham, said he was not. According to figures released today, the nation has now completed two full years, 24 months of unemployment at or above 5.5%. This is an intolerable level of joblessness and a sad testimonial to the economic policies of the Nixon administration, which inherited a 3.5% unemployment rate. Democratic economist Arthur Oakham was chairman of former President Johnson's Council of Economic Advisors. The Government Accounting Office today asked the Justice Department to review three apparent violations of campaign spending laws by the Democratic Party. More on the story from Paul Duke in Washington. The General Accounting Office upheld the Republican charge that the Democrats, like the Republicans, have violated a federal campaign spending law that went into effect earlier this year. But investigating officials made plain the charges against the Republicans are more substantial and more serious. Basically, the audit found a great deal of sloppy bookkeeping and accounting by the McGovern campaign staff. A spokesman said this has been characteristic of many other political campaigns since the law took effect. But the GAO did find two violations in the handling of campaign contributions and another that involved a failure to identify a labor group that paid for a political advertisement. The agency said these are being submitted to the Justice Department to consider whether any action is warranted. Paul Duke, NBC News, Washington. McGovern campaign chairman Lawrence O'Brien said today he was sure the three campaign funding irregularities would be found to have been mere technical errors. O'Brien also said a court order barring further comment on the Democratic headquarters bugging case amounted to what O'Brien called a gag rule, which he indicated Democrats would ignore. More news after this. That's our invitation for you to come to Rexall now during the one cent sale. The Rexall one cent sale. Save on dozens of products you need every day. Get two of a product for the manufacturer's list price of one plus a penny. It adds up to savings, savings, savings at participating Rexall stores. Like the gals say, R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-X-O-R-E-
down Hawaii way. This the worm is... turns, friends, in just seven minutes, so don't go away. That did it. Yakahula Hickey Doola. How's that there? Spice, it sounds like some sort of pimple cream. Uh, Spike Jones and the orchestra there, ten minutes after three. Walker and Scott from WRC. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Burke, boy, what's bugging you? The Harriman Ford, sir. Yeah, well, what is it, Burke? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Will you button up with the old boy bit, Burke, and tell me what's all about? That's it, sir. What's it? Buttons. Hero buttons. I bought ten tons of Harriman hero buttons. You what? But, Mr. Harriman, sir, we're going to need them, sir. Hey, don't you bought them. People are sending their friends to Harriman, <laughs> and uh, they're all demanding hero buttons. Ten tons? Especially uh, now with your fabulous Ford savings. Hero buttons? You're a jerk, Bert. And we're giving him a heck of a bargain, uh, sir. Oh, they, they, they like the low prices? Love your low prices, sir. <laughs> they, they like my trades? <laughs> Love your trades, sir. <laughs> and they like being a Harriman hero. Right on the button, sir. <laughs> okay, Francis, you can have your button. Oh, I got him right here in the closet, sir. Be a Harriman hero. Send a friend to Dick Harriman Ford on Leesburg Pike Creek 7 opposite Tyson's Corner Shopping Center, Beltway Exits 10W or 11S in Virginia. Let Harriman pin a hero button on you. All and right. now, great moments in history. The facts and true stories behind momentous events. Brought to you tonight by Magoo's Shampoo. To clean your hair the right way. Magoo, the foaming shampoo. Floats the dirt right down the drain. Blah, 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 blah. And now, Magoo's Shampoo for people like you. Present great moments in history. Tonight's exciting story of the Louisiana Purchase and how it came about. Our story opens in 1804. Thomas Jefferson is in the White House. Lannan and Shucks, real estate executors for Washington, have sent their ace dealer, Buford Beale, down to New Orleans, Louisiana, along with Alistair Wingate, United States attorney for real estate and personal friend of Thomas Jefferson, to negotiate for the United States. At a special table, the men are coughing and providing background noises. I'm going Louisiana, hey, right? Pierre yes, Sojour, representing His Majesty Napoleon of France, are trying to decide, along with Alistair Wingate for the United States, the how they can go about purchasing Louisiana from the French. Country is As Pierre says, to pay this much money, and now we want to make a deal with you. We want to sell all of this land right in here on the map, right here, 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 all the way over into there. Look, I'm terribly sorry, Pierre, but my country, representing Thomas Jefferson and the United States, we do not want all of this extra land all the way to the Rocky Mountains. All we want is Louisiana. I've told Pierre, you that this is the times. new frontier. America is going west. I don't give a hang about going west, young man. Did you get that? Yes, sir. I don't care a hang about going west. We want Louisiana, and that's all we want. Now, Mr. is it Wingate, a deal or is it a deal? Mr. Wingate, uh, quite between us. You are the press leave when you are talking confidentially. Thank you. Monsieur, quite frankly, my country cannot afford to pay the taxes on all of this land. We must, uh, how you say, unload it. I see. That's why the real estate man told me there'd probably be some kind of a pork barrel. Tell you what I will do for you. Mm -hmm. Why don't we work it out this way? You take Louisiana. And we... so, as Pierre Sojour, representing His Majesty Napoleon, and Alistair Wingate of the United States, discuss a private deal, something is made on the side that will give the United States some extra territory. But how was this deal transacted? Acted. Mm, correct that. As we come I back... got that, too. Thank yes. you. As we come back to the show, we find Sojour and Wingate uh, culminating the deal. Well, let us shake on this, Mr. Wingate. I think it's thank wonderful, you. Yes, and yes, thank yes. you very much. Thank you very How much, much is that now? That is, uh, let's see, $250,000. All right. There you are. Here's your receipt. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, and... Pleasure uh, to do business About the other things. Oh, yes, here you are. Here you are, right thank there. You. Can I put and these in my there. saddlebag? Stuff them in there in I your pocket. I cannot wait to get to Washington to see Thomas Jefferson. Paul Silver! Hooray! And so the daring and resourceful mass no, writer no, the... No, no, no. Oh, excuse me. And so, the theme comes back in the vogue again as we hear the announcer, so oh, that's me. Pierre Sojour, representing Napoleon, had made the transaction along with Alistair Wingate. Alistair was back on his way. He was in Washington, D.C. as the door opens and he steps into President Jefferson's office. Where are you? I'm sorry, President. Win Wingate, you ran right into the microphone, you idiot. <laughs> Say, it's good to see you back here. You've been gone way too long. Sit down and have a mint julep with me, boy. Tom, Tom, there's something I've got Call to talk to you about. President, will you? The press is out there. Oh. We got that. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, President. Yes. I can't wait. Look. 
Look at the transaction. What did you buy? You two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and I bought all of Louisiana for. Well, now that's what I sent you down there for in the first place, boy. Of course now, you bought all. Of look Louisiana. at this territory here, from Louisiana north all the way to Minnesota, all the way up to the Great uh, Mountains, the Smoky Mountains, Rocky. What do they call that? Rocky Mountains. Rocky. The Rocky Mountains. Man, what am I going to do with all that? Material? I bought all of this land for you, and guess what it cost? I hate to ask you this. What did it cost? Not one single penny. <laughs> Not one penny. No, it's here in the oh, saddlebag. Thank you. I'm not going to give it away. Look, here, sheets what? of them. Thousands of them. What are all these green stamps? Hundreds of them. That's exactly what they what are. are. they? Green stamps. Green stamps. 9,463. What do we do with them? We just get Kansas and Nebraska with them. With all the... Well, now I guess I'll have to call up that lousy vaudeville team that's been bugging me. You know, Lewis and Clark? Yeah? I think I'll send them out there, let them explore the land. Give them something to do. Keep them off my back for a while. Hey, you did a great thing there, Wingate. This green stamp thing might just catch on. <laughs> Count on Grand Union for discounts and more than discounts. Add up the Grand Union quality extras. All Grand Union meats, produce, and groceries are guaranteed to please or your money back. Now start subtracting. Grand Union means discounts in all departments all the time. This week's discount specials prove the point. USDA Grade A boneless turkey roast, 88 cents a pound. Mild cured fully cooked ham, shank portion, 59 cents a pound. Grand Union Grade A extra large eggs, 57 cents a dozen. Count on better meals. Count on better shopping. Remember, you can count on Grand Union for discounts and more than discounts. Grand Union, we're counting on you to know the difference. Hey, now don't forget, new Grand Union Supermarket now open on Little River Turnpike in Annandale, Virginia, and that happens to be next to Kmart.